happening, guys. We're leaving lockdown for what looks to be the last time. Touch wood, cross everything, no take backs, you say a prayer, light a candle. This is happening, probably, maybe, almost certainly, pretty much, we think. But it's worth noting that we have been in our houses for a year and a half while a global plague cast doom upon us. So while I'm all for getting back to life, before we do, I'd like to pitch a little idea. I'm calling a global what the fuck break. <laughs> sure. We want to move on, but maybe we shouldn't forget to spend a little bit of time thinking about what just happened. Because, guys, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> we were indoors for a year and a half. That's not normal. We can't just pretend it didn't happen. It's not your first three boyfriends. You have to face this. <laughs> when creepy Julian Assange finally emerged from the Ecuadorian embassy, he looked like a meth addict Father Christmas. <laughs> That's what being inside does to you. Mentally. That's what I look like. <laughs> Before lockdown, I went to the IMAX and a guy who came out of the start said, if you get overwhelmed, just take a deep breath and shut your eyes. At the IMAX, watching a big TV screen, I got more mental health advice about being overwhelmed <laughs> than we have returning to normality after 18 months of captivity. <laughs> It's all very well that things are opening up, but if you find yourself having a panic attack about going to brunch, you are not alone. I, for one, am dealing with seeing friends in pub gardens by being perfectly delightful company for the first hour, immediately running out of any capacity to socialise, then talking at pace while saying nothing and afterwards messaging everyone to say, that was nice, was that nice? Is that how people people? Oh, God, do you hate me? <laughs> now, if you're watching this and thinking, I'm fine, Catherine, you're not. I am. Jade, you became a beauty blogger, you are not fine. <laughs> we all went mad during lockdown. I'm sorry, but that's just a fact. Here's the problem. We have to acknowledge we went mad because if we don't, we will be unprepared for the consequences. And let me tell you, there will be consequences. <laughs> you don't go on a week-long bender and then get a taxi from the club to your office. You book a day off for the come down. We need a COVID come down. You think 12 million people could just buy a dog and that'll be fine. Some people had babies, babies. <laughs> Imagine explaining that to a kid. Usually people have children because it's the right time and they've always wanted one. Not because line of duty ended and they were at a loose end. <laughs> so many of us made huge life decisions during lockdown and then were protected from the fallout of those decisions by more lockdowns. A reckoning is coming, people. I'm talking to those of you who got divorced and didn't have to explain it to their mothers at Sunday lunch. <laughs> Do you know whose divorce we never have to worry about, though? Anyone who got engaged during lockdown. <laughs> Because you know who's never getting married? Anyone who got engaged during lockdown. I'm sorry, but if that's you, you are never getting married. There are couples who got engaged for a dare who have more chance of getting hitched. Let me put it to you this way. If your fiancé bought your engagement ring using Rishi Sunak's income support grant, there's no need to buy a white dress. <laughs> we all lived like there would be no questions after. Questions like, who's going to look after the dog when I don't have anything else to do but look after the dog? <laughs> who's going to look after my husband now that I don't want this husband? <laughs> Can I give back a baby? <laughs> I know people who moved out of London and their jobs are in London. They just didn't tell their bosses. OK, I know one person who did that, but Caroline, what are you going to do? Devon isn't a commuter town. <laughs> and yet still, so many people are in a rush to get back to normal as quickly as possible. Why? Do you guys remember normal? We were all overworked and it involved a lot of Boots meal deals and crying in Ubers. <laughs> so what am I suggesting? We all need a what the fuck break. Basically, a bank holiday to ease us all back into society. Like that little shower between the changing rooms and the swimming pool, but for your brain? <laughs> a few days where nobody has to pretend they're okay. You can shout in the street, cry in Aldi, and sure, meet up with people, but just sit in silence. No pressure to be interesting or even dressed. <laughs> Let's give people who need it, like Caroline, the chance to move back to London. <laughs> Let's all take a second. That's all I'm saying. Let's all take a second, have a what-the-fuck break, and maybe even take some of the good things from lockdown into the new world. <sighs> you know what, guys? Like they say at the IMAX, <laughs> if you get overwhelmed, just take a breath <sighs> and shut your eyes. <laughs> and if that doesn't work, make sure you keep your lockdown puppy with you at all times. <laughs> Puppy down. We have to finish the show. What the fuck? See, this is the problem. No. I've got allergies. I feel nothing for that dog. 